Welcome back to the Garza Gaming Channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my top three picks for those players that don't already own the Ultimate God Pack. that are looking to purchase an Assassin, but don't really know which Assassin might work well in Smite Arena, right? Now, there is some criteria that I put into effect that help me to select these three, right? Now, obviously, the, the, the biggest factor is the fact that if you don't have an Ultimate God Pack, you automatically get Nemesis and Thanatos for free. So you already got those two uh, Assassins, so obviously they're not going to be part of our picks. Now, these top three uh, Assassins that I selected... I also, based on the criteria of utility, survivability, and what they bring to a team environment, right? So my selections are, are assassins that I think will benefit you well with as you gain experience with them that will allow you to go in, do mass damage, but also live to tell the tale, right? Because, man, even the most lethal of all assassins ain't going to do you no good if you die every time you kill somebody, right? But anyway, without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so Arachne. Arachne is actually one of my favorite uh, assassins. She has a very nice and unique kit, right? Now, Arachne has a passive where an enemy, uh, the more damage you do to an enemy, the more physical damage you gain for every 5% of the enemy's health that's missing, whether you um, took that chunk out of that enemy or one of your uh, teammates did, right? So the more hurt an enemy is, the more damage you do to that set enemy. So that's really nice. Uh, second, they, she has a Venomous Bite. Now, this Venomous Bite, her number one, is really lethal. One, it does initial damage. It does a damage over time. Plus, you initiate a heal over time that heals Arachne, which is really nice. Now, her number two is pretty lethal as well. What, what happens with this attack is you actually can stun an enemy for up to 1.4 seconds by wrapping them up in a cocoon by uh, successfully hitting that enemy by three, uh, three times with a basic attack. So for every three basic attacks that you land while this is active, you wrap them up in a cocoon, speeding up your uh, attack speed up to 70% late game and cocooning them for 1.4 seconds. I'm telling you right now, a late game Arachne that's built correctly well, it's just instant death as she cocoons somebody. It's that, that powerful. Now, 1.4 seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, if you're the one that's cocooned, I guarantee you 1.4 seconds is going to feel like a lifetime. Now, her number three is this web that she, th she throws out. Now, she can throw this web out in the middle of nowhere, and it'll actually stay there for up to uh, 240 seconds, right? Now, this web is really nice because you can use it as an escape, you can use it as an initiator, or you can use it as a standalone trap out there. And any enemy that passes through it, right, is going to activate it, and they're going to actually get slowed for up to um, six seconds. Uh, and additionally, you, if you run through the trail of this uh, web, you actually get a movement speed of a 40%. Another cool thing is that if somebody, uh, actually an enemy walks through this web, it bursts into two broodlings or two little spiderlings that actually chase down the enemy that walked through that web and starts to do damage, legging up to 60 per hit, right? Now, I, I know a lot of, I do this and a lot of other Arachne uh, assassins I see do the same thing. They actually can use this as an initiator, especially against guys that don't have a wide cleave or an AOE type attack. So when you're actually attacking this, uh, the enemy, your broodlings are pretty much attacking next to you, each of them doing 60 damage per hit on top of your damage, man, which is just a snowball of death. Now, Arachne's ult is very unique as well. What happens is she jumps up into the, the sky and starts running upside down, getting a huge movement um, buff or movement speed buff of 40%, right? Now, this um, ult can be used, one, to do damage, or two, to escape damage as an escape, right? Uh, because once she jumps upside down, she's untargetable and moves very quickly uh, above the battlefield. Now, the cool thing about this attack is well, while you're running upside down, a lot of noobs to Arachne don't understand. You can actually engage your number one and your number two to have it ready before you jump down to just unleash hell on the enemy, right? Um, so if you're going to use this for damage, what you can do is jump up into your, go over an enemy area. Because remember, when she jumps down, the damage is an, an actually a small AOE um 
area, 25 feet AOE uh, circle, where she can do damage to multiple gods as she lands, plus slows them just um, pretty much giving the effect that your number three does to the enemy. So this is a very, very awesome um, ultimate to have uh, to land into an area where you have your team doing a huge team fight. Right. Uh, additionally, if you're hurt, you can use this to, you know, use your ult to actually escape and run to your base, uh, making it <laughs> a a little bit more survivable. Okay, Fenrir. Fenrir is actually one of my favorite assassins as well, man, because Fenrir is a very unique assassin that has pretty much three escapes, right? Now, Fenrir has a passive where he actually gains ruins that multiplies his benefits to various different attacks. He gains these ruins by doing basic attacks, by assisting on um, a kills, and recently they added where he gains two uh, ruins by using his number two, right? As you're going to see as we go further into his attacks. Now, the his number one unchained is a very awesome ability for Fenrir because it can be used both as an initiator and as an escape. Now, what happens with this is when you use it, Fenrir leaps in and does initial damage, but also can stun enemies and the cool thing about this attack is if you actually connect with it it takes a 30 percent cooldown reduction on it so you can actually use it as initiator do the damage you have to do and if you get and then use it again to escape depending on your cooldown on this ability so that's really really nice now Fenrir's number two is also uh what makes him <laughs> so lethal man because it's a self buff that actually heightens his physical power up to 80% more or 80 physical power. And plus it gives him 35% lifesteal on top of any other lifestyle that you might have in your build, right? Now the buff lasts for six seconds. And additionally, every time he casts his number two, he also gets two ruins. So this is also an awesome ability to use when you're not going to be engaged in combat within 13 seconds or if you're running back to your um, fountain to you know to get other items or health or mana because by the time you come out of your your um fountain you have two ruins possibly even four ruins already ready to go now Fenrir's brutalize is a very lethal attack that does a just snowball change a chain of claw attacks right and the at full ruins this attack actually does 15 percent additional physical power scaling per attack now this does um this is can also be used as a leap type attack it's a small leap that can be used both to initiate or actually to escape uh, certain situations once you built up your skill level uh so that's pretty cool and the cool thing about this is you actually get a little bit of protections as you're doing this attack now Fenrir's uh, ultimate is very unique one it also can be used as an initiator to do damage but two it can also be used as an escape because when you use this ability you uh, transform into a giant wolf right that you can snatch onto the enemy and lock them in your jaws doing initial high initial damage and additionally giving you a 75 percent movement speed buff and then you can actually carry whoever's in your mouth for up to 1.75 seconds. Now, if you use this ability around your base, it's very hilarious to snatch onto the enemy and then bring them inside your base, uh, pretty much making an instant death to the enemy, both by using uh, combining your cannons and then the initial damage that they're going to take for anybody that's inside your base. It's just instant death. Plus, it's hilarious to see. Now, the cool thing about this um, ability, if you use it at full ruins, you actually get... 60 protections late game making this a very awesome ultimate and this is why i think fenrir is just a very awesome assassin especially for anybody that's new to assassins in smite arena now any assassin list would not be complete without the king of all assassins and that's loki man loki by far is the most hated god in all of smite i don't care what game mode you play and that's because of a very crazy and unique kit that allows loki to literally appear out of nowhere and get a kill and then disappear again into the shadows right now loki gets a 50 percent damage um bonus if he attacks from the rear both with his basic attack and his number three flurry attack right now now, what makes Loki so hated his number one, his Vanish. This Vanish allows Loki to go invisible 
and get gain a 35% movement speed buff. Now, unless you have a beacon out there or have some type of unique ability like Hemdalir, so you can actually see and vis, Loki is literally invisible to any god unless he takes damage. When he takes damage, he you can only see like maybe a shadow of them for a split second right now what also makes this vanish very deadly is the fact when loki comes out of vanish he has up to two seconds to connect with the basic attack right and if he connects with that basic attack within those two seconds he implements a damage over time poison attack that combined with his regular basics or any other of his special attacks is just nasty and pretty much death to the enemy especially late game now, his number two is a very unique AoE that can be used in three ways. One, as an initiator, two, as minion control, and three is pretty much as an escape. Because what ends up happening is if an enemy is caught with four stacks of this dot, they actually get physically blinded. You get this green gunk all over your screen, making it almost impossible to see what the crap's around you, uh, allowing Loki to, you know, make it that easier for him to get away or to attack you and not know which way you're being hit from. So that's a very, very nasty AOE type uh, dot. Now, uh, Loki's number three, his flurry stripe, uh, also unleashes like a fan type targeting effect. Um, frontal attack that does a flurry of five dagger strikes right now the first four uh, do you know flurry damage plus slows the enemy for 15 percent movement speed for up to three seconds right but the fifth the final attack of that five flurry attack gets beefed up you that final attack does 135 uh, base damage late game plus 70 percent of loki's physical power now keep in mind that if you use this flurry attack from the rear it also benefits from behind you so you get an additional 15 percent more damage to the attack now that final cleave also slows the enemy by 30 percent for up to three seconds so this is, would be a very very nasty ability to use especially if you have multiple multiple team members trying to bring down a certain a guy that's trying to get away right now what uh, makes loki just so hated to is his assassinate man his assassinate is an ability that he uses that allows him to teleport uh, a small ways uh, and just finish off an enemy man any enemy that that's running for their life and and sees nothing around them is always has that that fear in the back of their mind that they're going to get jumped any second using this assassin i know i do every time i play against loki i'm just like dreading that 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 sound that you that unique sound that you hear when he uses this ability right now uh, loki's assassinate applies a cripple damage heavy damage and also has a one second stun uh, so the cool thing about this assassinate not only is a very lethal and, and scary as an initiator but it can also be used as an escape depending on the situation so that's what i'm saying man loki not only is he a lethal god damage wise but the fact that he has pretty much three ways of an escape in the way of his one two and his alt makes loki a very formidable assassin to play in arena now i can tell you out of all the um, assassins that we talked about today loki's probably one of the most difficult gods to use not only because of his kit but because of the simple fact that he's so hated that in most games i found in arena he is one of the most targeted gods bar none it's almost like people are trained as soon as you see loki attacking anybody everybody just focuses them instantly so keep that in mind so those are my top three picks for assassins for those players that don't already own an ultimate god pack they're looking for a hint at what assassins they should buy next with their favor right so what do you think about my selection do you think that i miss an assassin that i might have should have gave a little bit of credit to if so put your um suggestion in the comments down below but don't just say a, a god name let me know why you think that god that you're suggesting is should have made our list right uh give us that feedback uh additionally keep in mind dude no matter what god you pick 
it, everybody's different play styles, builds, and what have you contributes to various different aspects when you use a different God, right? So again, these are just my opinions of guys that I personally think will work well in Arena for those that are looking for ideas for new assassins to buy. Again, I hope that this video was uh, beneficial to you. And if so, hey, I'm going to be doing another video like this pretty much for every class. So make sure you subscribe to your channel and turn on those notifications so you get notified when those videos go live if you're looking for Hunter, Mages, Guardians, Warriors, or what have you, right? Again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And don't forget, we're now streaming every Tuesday at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time on our new Twitch channel. So make sure you come uh, and enjoy the fun. We're usually playing every Tuesday at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time in the morning with all of our subscribers and followers. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm Dark Garza, your OG on the GC. See you next time.